Oh my gosh, I am so sorry everyone. I, I promise I'm almost done with this game. I've been trying to beat this level forever. I'm on my last life. Give me two seconds. Sugar crush. Yes! Oh. Oh. <laughs> How many of you out there have heard something like this from a kid before? <laughs> I know my parents heard it from me far too often when I was growing up because I love games. I mean, I really love games. Games can take you to places you've never been before, evoke different emotions, and sometimes even tell a wonderful story. I still remember those late nights, my heart racing as I wandered through empty streets, wondering when the next zombie was going to jump out and attack. <laughs> Some weeks, I was the strategic commander of an entire army. What troops should I train in? How should I set our defenses to prevent invasion? My troops were counting on me to make the right decisions to ensure our victory. Or maybe I would jump right into the fray as a soldier on the front lines, making split-second decisions to rally my troops forward. I had to be constantly aware of my surroundings and ready to act at a moment's notice. My parents weren't gamers, so they didn't understand my fascination with all these games. It didn't help that I had an older brother who did all those things that parents love to see their kids do, like go outside and play and read books. My parents used to plead with me to put down the controller and go out with my brother, but I just wanted to keep playing. I'd rather be playing that latest video game than going to see that new action flick, or going to play a pickup game of sports with the kids down the street, or even more than sleeping when I could get away with it. My parents used to worry that I wasn't going to live up to my potential. In fact, at one point, they even thought the games had become bad for my health. I'll never forget the month that I was banned from games because my parents thought my eyes were too irritated from always sitting too close to the television screen. Fortunately for me, that didn't turn out to be the problem because honestly, I don't know if I could have made it another day without my games. I'm sure many of you share the same types of concerns about your kids, but let me assure you, those candies will not crush themselves. <laughs> More importantly though, there is a silver lining in this candy storm. I'm fortunate to have two very caring and concerned parents, but also two of the most amazing parents in the world. When they realized that nothing was going to stop my passion for games, they decided to let me run with it. I was only seven years old when I woke up to one of the very first computers in my small town in Wyoming, which to this day remains completely unreal to me because at the time, we didn't have a lot of money. But my parents' support and that computer forever changed the course of my life. It wasn't just me sitting in a room playing with a box anymore. It was me connecting to the world around me through games. I could connect with other real people who love games just as much as I do and learn from their experiences and play with them. I used to play this game online. It was all text, no graphics at all. But that didn't matter to me because that was the very first game I ever played that was played by other people at the same time. I guess you could think of it as a precursor to these massively multi-online player games kids are playing today. What made this game so amazing to me was it was the first time I realized the decisions I was making had a real impact on other people in the world. Suddenly it mattered who I made my friends and who I made my enemies. It mattered if I was away from this world for a long time because it went on with or without me. The interactions I had with these people were real and permanent. That was the first experience I ever had with a game that actually had an impact on the world around me, but it wouldn't be my last. You never really think about it, but it's surprising all the different skills games can help you train if you pay attention. Strategy, split-second decision-making, logic and reasoning, these are just a few of the skills games can teach us more about, especially when the choices you make have real-world consequences. As I grew up, I kept playing anything and everything I could get my hands on. I wanted to experience all those different emotions and learn all the different skills of the gaming world. But as I got older, I felt more and more pressure to give up the games, do something productive with my life. I always knew I loved computers, 
And even at an early age, I thought I would be a computer scientist. Programming and working on computers, it just seemed like a natural fit for me. But as much as I loved games, designing them didn't seem like the right choice. I wanted to do something with my life, something that would make a difference. So when I went to college, I decided to study bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is all about using computers to help make sense of large amounts of biological data. For example, using software to compare genome sequences or protein sequences. As an upcoming field, I thought it could help me get a job where I could make a difference, but I just didn't love it the same way I'd always loved games. Then, my senior year, I discovered artificial intelligence and started to fall in love again. Artificial intelligence was all about creating systems to help make decisions. The same technology that was behind the villains I used to play against as a kid, only it had other real-world applications, too. I knew there was something special about this field, but my mind was about to be open to a whole new world of possibilities. I applied to graduate school to learn more about artificial intelligence, and I was approached by a professor who had a game-changing idea. He had noticed in my application that I had written about my passion for games. So he sat down with me and he said, how would you feel about playing games to help improve security? Playing games to help improve security? It didn't make any sense to me at the time. It was completely out of the box, but that didn't matter to me. Suddenly, all that pressure to grow up and take the safe path just disappeared. This was the moment I had been waiting for, the chance to take something that I'd always loved and actually make a difference. I'm addicted to playing a new game today, one that may change the way you think about games. This game has two players. The first players are African poachers, and they have been playing the game extremely well for some time now. They've significantly contributed to 61 species being made extinct by human activities. For perspective, the global population of tigers has dropped over 95% since the 1900s, with three out of nine tiger species now extinct. The second players in this game are animal protection agencies, and me and the people I work with are helping them to play the best game they possibly can, and hopefully helping them to win. My company designs software that helps them understand just how effective would one more patrol be, or why is using technology X alongside technology Y better than using them separately? We help them determine what the best times to send their troops out to patrol are and how they should patrol the land in order to maximize their deterrence. My job is to stay one step ahead of the bad guys, and I do that by integrating real-time data on new poaching activities, new animal migration patterns, new technology that's been developed, and anything else I can get my hands on to help them develop better strategies. And just like the games I used to play as a kid, the choices we make have real and permanent consequences. But that's not the only game I'm addicted to playing now. I'm also playing games at airports, waterways, and metros to help protect innocent travelers. I'm playing games at university campuses to help students get to and from class safely. I'm even playing auditing games to help with financial fraud and insider threats. My work can and has stopped real-life bad guys. Game theory has evolved and is continuing to improve the odds in favor of the good guy. But I'm a realist. I know I can't stop all the bad people out there. Bad things are going to happen. But knowing that I might be the reason that even one more person makes it home safely tonight, having unknowingly been in harm's way, is the reason I wake up every morning more excited than ever to keep playing. For all I know, it might even be me, on my way home to see the parents that dared to believe in me. Knowing that I'm making a difference has only made me love games now more than ever. So I would encourage all of you who have a passion for something that may seem silly to others, hold on to it tightly and explore it fully because you never know where it might take you, even when the rest of the world thinks you're just playing games. Thank you.